a lot of artists get lost I would say get lost in the source, right? Of mm. oh wow, ah yeah, label. I got a big label, yeah, and I got all this team behind me. It's fantastic, but as you said, it's a loan, right? Yeah. You're forgetting that these guys are putting in tens, maybe hundreds of thousands, possibly millions, um, before you even make any money. Yeah, and then you find out we've heard so many artists go through yeah. this whole thing of oh well, I'm in debt. Yeah, have I made so much money or sold so much, but I'm still in debt? And then they say, well, you know, you've got yeah. this deal, three sixty, and we provide you with this. But you got to pay everyone, including the person that's doing the marketing, your social media, your yeah. every little thing from the guy that's getting your coffees when you're in studio. Artists are more alert now. We're more aware of it because we've heard all the stories. Yeah. But still, there's that still that a little bit of glitz and gamma that's still tied to, or oh, yeah, the major labels um, getting a record label and getting a record deal. I always like to talk about this because I think you know we know as artists that there's there's these things that happen. But how do artists protect themselves, in your view? How can artists protect themselves from that sort of exploitation? Because I think that's one of the biggest problems, yeah. isn't it? I think um, if you get a contract, always read it and get other people to read it as well. Yeah. Like people, like, you know, music lawyers and like anyone who knows anything about the industry to see like, are you getting what you deserve out of this and will you benefit? And is there something, is there a loophole in here that could maybe, you know, really mess up your life if you don't look at it and maybe don't abide to this. Um, I think also signing up to like PRS, things like that. So you own the rights, you have to own your music because yeah. um, I think that's the most important thing. Like with like with really big labels, things like that, as soon as you're done with them, they own your music and anything, mm. every time your music like played on the radio or if it's using a film or anything like that, which are big ways to bring in income as an artist, you're not getting the money, you're not seeing it even if you created it, but they will get it. Um, so it's like owning your music, trying to basically just, I think it's always like research, doing, learning as much as you can about the industry. Cause the more, you know, the more you'll be aware about the things that can happen. And like, I always like looking at like artist stories and like seeing, like learning about, like, I think there's a lot of artists with where they've had problems with the labels, like people like Ray, incredible uh, yeah. independent artist, but like, she had such in, like massive labels, like problems with her label, wow. um, especially with the whole branding things. Like they wanted her to be a dance artist, I think. And mm. she wanted to create everything else. or like yeah. make up the music that she wanted to create and not necessarily have to fit in a brand. Mm. I know like um, one of my favorite artists, Frank Ocean, I know he had problems oh, with his yeah, brand. Frank, yeah. The whole finesse, the um, Def Jam for 2 million. No, was it 2 million or was it like 20? I don't know. It was a really big was 20, number. I think it was, I think 20 it was million. 20. Yeah. I was like, oh my God. Yeah. And Endless and Blonde are both incredible. All his projects yeah. are incredible. I'm like, I mean, I'm a very biased, dedicated fan. Yeah, but, yeah um, no, I don't blame you. <laughs> but yeah, so like just stories like that, you you hear about and you're like, oh, that's a bit crazy. Why does that happen? You have to like kind of really look into it. I think